Welcome everyone, it's good to see you. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There are no other commandments greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. Good morning. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. The word of the Lord. Let's take turns on the psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills. 
My help comes from the Lord. He will not let your foot be moved. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel. The Lord himself watches over you. So that the sun shall not strike you by day. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where, this is, where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us, of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom we believe, or he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? 
No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lift up, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, take our minds and think through them. Take our hands and work through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. Please be seated. I do this from time to time, um, but today is definitely one of those days when I really wish that we all understood biblical Greek the original language of the Gospel of John, because our English translation just doesn't really cut it. We miss so much. Unless we read, that is, from an annotated Bible, and then we pay attention to all those little footnotes at the bottom, when we just read it like we just did, it forces us to see God in one dimension. I think it limits our understanding of the divine And it limits our faithful response to God as well. Nicodemus, a Pharisee and religious leader of his day, is an example of just such a limitation, although that one was of his own making. To give a bit of background, the two stories immediately preceding today's gospel reading are the miracle at the wedding at Cana, where Jesus changes water into wine, And then Jesus cleansing the temple, that is, when he overturns the tables of the money changers. You might think that's a story for later in the gospel, and indeed in the other gospels it is part of our Holy Week narrative. But here in John, it happens at the beginning because these are stories centering on signs pointing to Jesus' identity, and this is a common motif that John engages in. So today we pick up with Nicodemus going by night to meet with Jesus in Jerusalem. Upon finding him, he exclaimed, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus responded, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Now, Jesus' teaching does something interesting here. He combines the traditional language and image of the kingdom of God with this metaphor, to be born. And not only that, but as our translation says, to be born from above. But the Greek word anothian, which we translate as above, actually means both from above and also again. This double meaning is only possible when you read it in the Greek. There is no Hebrew or Aramaic or let alone an English word that contains this double meaning. And so the translator had to make a decision for us. And that's what we get, to be born from above. But if we read it as that Greek word anothian, and we understand it to be both from above and again, then we understand that what Jesus is talking about here is both the time of birth, that again, and also the place from which we are born, from above. In this way, he is offering us this image that is both temporal, horizontal, as well as transcendent, vertical. When this passage, though, translates it as either from above, as our translation today does, or as being born again, as some other translations of the Bible do, it means that this ambiguity is lost and a decision has been made for us. But what choice would you make? To be born from above 
Would you choose to be born again? Could you choose to be both, like Jesus offers? That very idea was not one that Nicodemus could grasp, and so he responded to Jesus at a very literal level. How can anyone be born after growing old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And I have some empathy for Nicodemus here. I can see how he sees this encounter with Jesus is spinning into a direction that he did not intend. He came to Jesus with this idea about who Jesus was and a certainty about what was possible. And when faced with a loss of that perceived identity and certainty, instead of opening himself up to possibility and change and transformation, instead he grasped for control. It was his grasping closed fists that made him resistant to Jesus' teaching about being born both from above and born again. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus said in response, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit, capital S, is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. Again, Jesus tried to lead Nicodemus into this full meaning of his words, to be born again and from above he says, is to be born of water and the Spirit. Entrance into the kingdom of God will require both this double birth, this physical birth, one of water, and this spiritual birth, one of the Spirit. Now for us, like the earliest Christians, this imagery invoking baptism is remarkable. But like baptism, being born, whether we say from above or again, is not a once-for-all event. It is merely the seed of the ongoing transformation of our lives. And so Jesus says, The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know from where it comes or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now the Greek word for spirit, pneuma, like Anothian, has two inherent meanings. It means both wind and spirit. And this word perfectly captures the essence of Jesus' message. The wind spirit blows where it will, and while humans can perceive its presence, they cannot determine where it goes. Jesus' offer of new birth is like this wind spirit. It is a mystery beyond knowledge and human control. It can only be known in experience. And Nicodemus says, how can this be? How can it be indeed? How often is our own faith a Nicodemus faith? Seeking God but not being willing to let go of our need for control stubbornly refusing to see the complexity of God and instead wanting easy answers and simple faith. It brings to mind that very pithy statement, let go and let God, right? Just let go, let God. And yet, there is some real deep truth in that aphorism, That's exactly what Abraham and Sarah did, actually. In our reading today from Genesis, God told them to go, and they went. They followed where God's spirit blew them. And God said to them, I will bless you, and you will be a blessing to others. Jesus responded Oops, I'm on the wrong page, sorry. (laughs) So God said to Abram and Sarah, go, you will be a blessing, and you will be a blessing to others. So how many of us can say that we have an Abraham and Sarah faith? A faith that goes where God tells us to go. 
the kind that leads us to abandon everything we know and, more importantly, our own sense of control. I suspect that most of us, or if you are anything like me, have a bit of both Nicodemus and Abraham and Sarah faith in us. They are, in fact, these two kinds of faith, like different facets of our faith lives. More precisely, I would say, of our faithfulness to God. Because for all the many ways that the word faith is used, both for good and for ill, and including the many times that I have spoken about faith today, the very best way of defining faith that I have ever come across was not in some heavy theological tome or words of wisdom sprouted from a vaunt, vaulted, vaunted, what's the word I'm looking for, um, great seminary professor of mine. Instead, it came from a book that I was given when my son Zach was baptized. And I've shared this definition of faith before. It comes from this book called Real Kids, Real Faith, Practices for Nurturing Children's Spiritual Lives. And it defines faith in this way. Faith is a gift from God. It is neither a particular set of beliefs nor a well-developed cognitive understanding of all things spiritual. Faith is an act of grace in which God chooses to be in relationship with humanity. As I said, I've shared this before, and I will always share it again because it is a definition that I personally return to again and again. God gives every one of us faith. And it tells us this remarkable truth that all the faith we will ever need is already in us. It's not a matter then of Abraham and Sarah having a stronger or better faith than Nicodemus. No, what sets them apart was their response to God and to God's spirit that was different. And so this is the definition of faithfulness found in this book. Faithfulness is a human response to God's gift of faith. It is a disposition that welcomes God's presence and seeks God's teaching. It is our attempt to let God's love permeate all of our senses and guide our thoughts and our behavior. And it is something more, I think. It is the thing that enlivens our willingness to go where that spirit leads. In this way, Nicodemus does fall short of Abraham and Sarah, not because he doesn't have faith. Because yes, he welcomed the presence of Jesus, and yes, he sought out his teaching. However, it was in that follow-through, the following of the spirit, that he resisted, that he just couldn't go. And how true of that, how true is that for many of us? We come here, we seek God, but are we really transformed? How are we resisting the, the winds of the Spirit blowing in our lives? For me, in this season of Lent, one, thing that I, one way that I'm attempting, pardon me, to be faithful is to let the love of God guide my thoughts and my behavior as I reflect on where and how the Spirit is moving in my life. To be honest about the times that I, like Nicodemus, let my need for control inhibit me from truly listening to the voice of God. To step back from my resistance to change, being blown off of the course that I have set, and instead to comprehend the reality that change is always happening, often quickly, from pain to joy, from rain to sun, but just as often slowly, the unfolding of a season, that which seems unbearable now and tomorrow, slowly lessening in time. 
My invitation to each of us as we deepen our Lenten journey together is to take a moment or perhaps a series of moments strung together to reflect on how the winds of the Spirit are blowing in our lives, to embrace the faith that is in us and be thankful for the grace of God, to pray for faithfulness to go where God leads and to let go of those things that keep us from living as faithfully as possible, to truly be born both from above and again, and to really just let go and let God. Amen. You are invited to stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this town, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need of comfort 
and healing. Kitty, Sue, Charlotte, Paul, Mariana, Alton, Sally, Frank, Debbie, Holly, Mary Lou, Liz, Joan, Bonnie, Tamara, Janet, Robin, Lynn, Duke, Mike, James, Catherine, the people of East Palestine, and Norma. Are there others? For those expecting babies soon, Brandon and May, Peter and Faith, Tim and Elizabeth, are there others? For those serving in the military and their families, especially Will, McKenna, Brennan, and JB, are there others? For those who grieve, Juan, Susan, the Gregory family, the Cardin family, Wanda, and family, are there others? For those who have died, George, David, Jim, Will, are there others? In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. May the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, and uh, you may be seated, and peace to those of you who are joining us online today as well. A few announcements for our life together. Um, first, there are some mite, box, mite boxes pardon me, in the basket that's on the table um, leading into the narthex. So if you would like to take a mite box to collect money in throughout Lent, um, we will gather them at Easter, and all the monies collected will go to support. A is for Africa. Also, next Sunday, Troop 829 is participating with other local area scout troops to do scouting for food. They will be collecting food from all over the Mount Airy area. All of the donations will go to Mount Airy Net to feed, to feed hungry neighbors. So if you would like to bring donations next Sunday, then those will go towards the collection for Troop 829. On Thursday's Shell newsletter, I announced the uh, book pick for our spring book discussion group. It is this book, Receiving Jesus, The Way of Love. Um, it's a book written by Marianne Edgar Buddy, who is the Bishop of the Diocese of Washington. And I think it will make a good book to bridge us from Lent into Eastertide. We will be reading this over the next month, month and a half, and gathering towards the end of April at the Mount Airy Tavern over dessert for discussion and reflection. So um, feel free to pick up a copy of this and begin reading. And if grabbing another book is a stretch for you and your budget right now, just let me know because I do have some funds that could help out. Two more quick announcements. The thrift shop changeover is coming up soon where they change out everything in the shop that's winter and turn it over into all of our spring and summer merchandise. So if you would like to help with that, there is a sign-up sheet in the narthex by the bulletin boards. And a notice at the back of your bulletin is that I will be out of the office this Tuesday through Friday. I'm attending 
um, a continuing ed conference for those four days. If you have a pastoral emergency, please call the church or my cell phone. Just know that I won't be answering emails most of next week if it's not an emergency. Are there any Thanksgivings of the community to share today? Birthdays, anniversaries, or other movements of the spirit we can celebrate with you? Okay. We didn't have any at 8.30 either. It's an odd Sunday when there's not something that we uh, pray and celebrate together. But let us pray. If you are coming to make your gift before the altar and there remember your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift before the altar. First go, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and make your offering before God. Let us pray. All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is ever turned toward your world. In love, you created us in your own image, yet in disobedience, we continue to distort that image. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death, yet in disobedience, we continue to try and earn our salvation. In love, you poured out your Spirit to empower a community of faith, yet in disobedience, we continue to live selfishly in our own strength. Into the darkness came, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. He accepted the way of the cross. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. We do not always understand them. We do not always accept them. We cannot always appreciate them. As we stand at the foot of the cross today, we can only wonder at the depth of your love and bow down and worship in union with all the hosts of heaven, praising you with their unending song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the world. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. In Gethsemane he asked that you might take this cup from him, yet willingly he surrendered to your will for our sake. He accepted the way of the cross. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. He accepted the way of the cross. Therefore, Father, with this bread and with this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to intercede for us in all the world. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with eyes wide open and hearts on fire. He accepted the way of the cross. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worship, worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated.
you are invited to stand as we pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Set us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow before the Lord. Keep this family, Lord, with your never-failing mercy, that relying solely on the help of your heavenly grace, they may be upheld by your divine protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and your neighbor. Thanks be to God.